ashamed of the God that you serve. Can we lift our hands? Can we lift our hands? And just tell him how holy he is. You are such a holy God. Such a worthy God. And we honor you and we lift you up high. We lift you up high above anything else today, Father. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Lord, you are holy. Thank you. 
especially for some of you that are a little older. You know holy, holy. Holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy. Blessed Trinity. And they did some of it. Holy, holy, holy. Younger, 
those older, amen, that are going through um, not just great times, but going through some challenging times. So continue to pray for all of ours that are married, those that are contemplating marriage, engaged to be married. We pray, amen, that our marriages will just continue to be strengthened. We're grateful for that. Don't forget on next Sunday, we're looking to come back. And as you saw, it's, it's imperative that you are SVP. So we need our members to make sure that you follow the strict guidelines that we must put in place if we can come back. So this time next Sunday, if the Lord says the same, we will be gathered here in the sanctuary together, lifting up and praising God together. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Amen. We're getting ready to hear the reading of the scripture. After the reading of the scripture, the ministry of music will come back. And I have a word that I want to share with you even on this morning. And um, God is just good. Just one announcement I did see up there. Don't forget to members of Grove, uh, especially. Don't forget to continue to make your uh, giving, your contributions. Those that are tithing, that you would tithe. Those that would give as the Lord has blessed you. The truth is, many of us have been greatly blessed during this COVID time. As quiet as it's kept, so you may not say it out loud, but you've been blessed better in these last six, seven months than you have even prior to COVID. Amen. And it's only right to show God your appreciation for having blessed you. So the Lord bless you, Lord keep you. Amen.
He's in love with us. such a mighty way. Thank you, Sister Holland, for the reading of the word. Um, the word found today is coming out of Matthew chapter 22. And um, a couple of verses I want you just to look at. Today, I, what I want to do really, and I, and, I, and I won't be long. Um, we're going we're gonna to go through some scripture today because I want to conclude this matter that we started talking about a few weeks ago. And, um, but I want you to be able to see it in the scriptures and what the Lord is saying. So I, I want to continue and conclude our best is yet to come. Amen. And this would be part three. And um, if there was a personal thought that I would like for us to pull out of this, is being my best. Mm -hmm. So each of you would say, being my best. Be my best. Your best is yet to come, mm -hmm. being my best. Um, I would lay this, this question, I guess, upon all of us. When will my best come? Mm -hmm. And we've kind of talked about it. I talked about the children of Israel and how the Lord brought them out. And then finally, they were now headed towards their best. We talked about Peter and his ups and his downs and his roller coaster ride. But now he was getting ready to experience the best that the Lord had for him. Uh, so our question, I guess even to many of ourselves, is when will my best come? If that's the question, the simple answer I will give you is when we are pleasing God. Amen. So... If, if I said the benediction now, that really would be the gist of the whole message. When will my best come? When I'm pleasing God. But in order for me to conclude that in the next 20 minutes or so, the middle is what does it mean to please God? So my best will come when I'm pleasing God. But what does it mean? Please God. Many would say, well, joining and going to church, that's going to please God. Yeah, that will please God. Others would say, obeying all of the commandments. Okay. And some would say, presenting my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is just my reasonable service. I know this would please God. Yes, that would please God. Others would say, well, doing unto others as you would have them do unto you, that would please God, yes? Some others might say, well, giving my tithe and my offering unto the Lord and being faithful uh, to the service, that pleases God. All of these things, I'm certain, pleases God. All of these that I'm talking about, we can find scriptural, historical, and moral evidence that all of these things certainly please the Lord. So many times we love to pride ourselves 
on the things that we're doing because we believe these are the things that please the Lord the most. Yeah. So you might say, I'm pleasing the Lord more than you because look at what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, you're not doing this or you're not yeah. pleasing God, but I'm pleasing God. So we pride ourselves and we think that the things we're doing is more pleasing to God than what someone else is doing. We must understand that as Christians, followers of Christ, his disciples, that the most important law and instruction must be to obey what Jesus said. So what I'm saying is this, and again, just kind of work with me as we work through this. There have been many laws and books and instructions and commentaries written that give us direction on how we should live. There are sacred manuscripts and writings and from centuries past that give great wisdom and inspiration on how to live this life. And we can follow a lot of those manuals. Yes. There are countless books on doctrines and chronicles from the early church fathers and contemporary theologians and writings down through the ages that would help us know how to live. Uh, there are the writings of uh, the great historian Josephus down who is considered, though non-canonical, but inspirational books. The epistles of Paul, which the church has qualified as canon in the word of God. There are a lot of writings, but nonetheless, mm. I will suggest, whenever there's a question, whenever there's ambiguity and uncertainty about what it means to please God, mm. I suggest that we go right to what Jesus said. No matter what all the other writings are, what did Jesus say? Jesus. So in the text that was read in our hearing in Matthew 22, it says, verse 34, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees. See, they were, they, they, they were here, and you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they were challenging Jesus with all these questions. Well, what about this? And what about that? And how do we do this? And Jesus kept responding and responding and responding. And so it says, now, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, uh, the Pharisees got together. Yeah. And one of them, who was an expert in the law, he tested Jesus with this question, verse 36. Teacher? Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Mm -hmm. Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Yeah. Now, we know that the law definitely depicted righteousness. Mm -hmm. The law defines sin and judgment. There were people that lived their life yes. according to the law, yes. according to the Torah according to what was written in the scripture. Yes. Not just the Ten Commandments, right. but there were Levitical laws. There were a whole lot of laws, and these people lived according to the law. So they're trying to check Jesus here yes. now. All right, Jesus, there's a whole lot of laws out there. There's a whole lot of things we should be following. Which is the greatest mm -hmm. of all the laws? Jesus says, verse 37, okay. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. He said, now this is the first and the greatest commandment. Mm -hmm. He said, but the second is like unto it, or it's equal, or it's just as important that you love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And then look at what he says in verse 40. All the law and the prophets. Hang on these two. They figured they were going to catch it. There's a whole lot of them. Which one? Is it this one? Is it this one? You know how we like to pride ourselves. I do this, and I do that. And I do this, and I do that. I don't do that. I've seen them doing this. I don't do that. Wh wh which one is the right one? Which one is the one yeah. that we need to make sure that we got everything right? And Jesus says, love God, uh -huh. love others. Jesus Creed. Those that have been in Bible studies, you know what I'm talking about. Love God. Yes. And the second one is as great that you love. And then he qualifies it by saying, all of the law yes. and the prophets. Mm -hmm. That means everything that has been said, he said, up until this time, yes. 
hang on two things. Teach it, Pastor. All of the law that Moses wrote. Uh -huh. All of the words that the prophets spoke. The great Elijah. Amen. Ezekiel. Isaiah. Amen. All of their words. Everything that has ever been said up until this time. Jesus says there's two things. Come on. That's preeminent over everything. And then he says not only are they preeminent. He says everything that was ever written or said falls within those two. Jesus honored the scriptures of the past, the holy writings of the Torah. He always referenced them when he was teaching and preaching. So many times when he would teach, Jesus would say, and the scriptures say. He said, and the writings say, and Isaiah said. He might say, and Jeremiah said, or Hosea said. He would always reference the words of the prophets and the writings. So it lets us know that he had high honor for yes. those words. Yes. He had great respect for the scribes and the historians, of, for the priests and for those keepers of the law. Mm. But whenever he was challenged by the Pharisees or anyone, what the scriptures had to say, hallelujah, which was the greatest, he gave a clear and a distinct answer. This happens so many times when we try to use the scriptures and the law to live our lives and to judge others by. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You ought to be doing this. And we, and, and we, and we try to lay laws and restrictions on people. And what we need to find out is any of those laws or restrictions we're trying to lay on somebody any of the ones that we boast we do, do they fall under loving God with all our heart and loving one another as ourselves? Because he says every law in the prophets falls under those two. If he were asked this question, Jesus, say we're like the Pharisees now. We come up in 2020. So we won't say, Jesus, which law is the greatest. We would ask Jesus something like this. Jesus, what sin is the greatest? Mm. That's how we would ask him. Mm. Because we got our pet sins, and we got those that we hide in the corner, mm. and we got those we want to highlight, and we got those we want to point fingers at, so now we want Jesus to help us. Jesus, which sin is the greatest? We got him now. Mm. I believe his answer would be something like this. I died for all sin. Yes. Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> if he further elaborated, he might say something like, well, there may be a lot of sins. Some are greater than others. Some are more heinous than others. Some grieve the Father more than others. But I died for all sin. And if I died for all sin, then all sin can be forgiven according to the mercy of my Father. But this, no, Jesus, but that, Jesus said, all right, I, I get you. Mm -hmm. But I died for all, all of it. sin. Yeah. Mm. And all can be forgiven by my Father, Jesus. listen, according to his mercy. Mm. Not your mercy, right. not your choosing. Right. Not you deciding who is, who ain't, who will, who won't, who's better, who's not. I'm still talking about your best yet to come. I am. I promise you I am. Thank you, Lord. Today is not a theological discourse or debate. I could get deep, but I won't get deep. 
But it's not a theological discourse on Calvinism versus Arminianism. And somebody may be listening and they say, well, I don't know if that really fits our Calvinistic tulip. Uh, amen. Or, or Arian's total grace. Or election and predestination. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, these could be discussions that would fall under a lot of those theological arguments right. and discourses. I promise you they would. Mm -hmm. But I just want to simply state the effectiveness <laughs> of the blood of Jesus in Jesus. cleansing all sin. Yeah. Thank you. So in all of the theology out the window, yeah. Jesus' blood yeah. cleanses us yeah. from, all from all sin. I, I, I don't care which camp you lie in at this point in your theological persuasion. At the end of the day, amen, Jesus died, hallelujah, for the propitiation of our sin. Romans 13, 9. I got some scriptures I'm going to lay out and then that's it today. I, I, you'll have it. Romans 13, 9, Paul is talking. And, and I love what he says here. He says the commandments. And he, and he says, do not commit adultery. Do not commit murder. Do not steal. Mm -hmm. Do not covet. And whatever other commandment there may be. So again, Paul now is kind of, now he, he's saying what Jesus says. No matter what commandment you come up with. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Kill, kill, He says, we go outside of the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Let's go to all of the other. No matter what they come up with, he says all of it is summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor mm -hmm. as yourself. Thank you, Lord. And then look at what verse 10 says. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Mm -hmm. Therefore, love is the fulfillment mm -hmm. of the law. So no matter what law that you come up with, yes. that you see that was written, that was chronicled, that was penned, amen, that was followed, that was taught, whether it's pharisaical law, Levitical law, Mosaic law, no matter what that law may be, he said all of it comes, is summed up in one rule. Mm. Love your neighbor as yourself. And love does no harm to its neighbor. Mm. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Galatians 5.14, Paul says something very similar. He says the entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor mm -hmm. as yourself. See, there are people, understand, I was talking about sin a little while ago, but there are people who ignorantly sin, and when they're convicted by the Holy Spirit, They'll feel remorse and repent. These are called, when we're studying sin, sins of the flesh. You've got sins of the flesh and then what's called sins of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Sins of the flesh are those sins that we commit, those outward sins. We know it. Every one of us all have sin and come short of the God. First John says, and he who says he has no sin or does not commit sin, it says he's a liar and he calls God a liar. Mm -hmm. So you can't sit wherever you're sitting right now and say, I don't sin. Yes, you do. Right. Yes, right. you have. And yes, you continue to do. You may not practice it, but you still commit it. Jesus. Amen. And when you do it, the Holy Spirit in you causes you to repent of that sin and thank God for, he says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. Amen. That's sins of the flesh that we do. And we acknowledge and say, man, I messed up. Amen. And you might mess up Monday. You might mess up again Tuesday or Wednesday. But guess what? Each time you're saying, God, I really, really, I don't believe I did that again. Amen. That's in, and, and you're coming to God and say, all right, sins of the flesh. But then there are those who willfully sin. In other words, repeatedly, knowingly do it with little or no remorse of the heart. This is what we call sin of the spirit. That we've sinned now in our spirit. Now, I'm not even talking about the Holy Spirit because there is a sin against the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about this is the sin that we commit, that we, com 
we, we repetitively do, we willingly do willful sin. We know that it's sin against yeah. God, but we yeah. do it anyway, and we never repent for it. Jesus, have mercy. The sin of the spirit, sin is out of our heart. Mm. Amen. This is when our heart becomes seared. Amen. The Bible says they, their hearts have become seared. Uh, amen. That they have no more feeling of it. I know I'm doing it. Hallelujah. But guess what? I don't care. Or are we taking God for granted? He says in Romans 6, 1, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Hallelujah. Second mm. Corinthians 5, 10. Find out some scriptures. I promise you I'm not going to be long. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he or she has done in the body, whether good or evil. It lets us know that none of us will be sitting in that place of judgment with anyone else concerned. Everyone will have to sit before God and they will have to answer for their sin, for what they have done, hallelujah, in this world, whether good or evil. So we'll be judged for our good as well as for our Jesus. evil. Jesus. Therefore, none of us are in a position to give a final judgment on anyone else's internal sin. God hasn't given us that privilege, mm. that right, nor that authority. Thank you, Lord. I, I'm, I'm still talking about your past. Yeah. I know. They seem like we're not there, but I'm still talking about your past. I promise you I am. Thank you, Lord. James 2, verse 8, 9. Love your neighbor mm -hmm. as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you have committed a sin and you're guilty of breaking the law. Mm. Now for the Jew, that meant a lot. Because if you broke one law, mm. then you were guilty of breaking the entire law. And when you favor one over the other, he says you have committed sin. Mm. So I'll accept your sin, but your sin, no way. Mm. The Bible says when you've done that, you just committed sin. Now, what I'm getting to, I ask the question, when will my best come? And I said, when we please God. But then the question in the middle is, how do we please God? Because it's only when we please God that we can get to my best. Your best is yet to come. Mm -hmm. But your best will only come when you begin to please God. Thank you, Lord. How do I please God? I please God when I love him with all of my heart mm -hmm. and all my soul. And when I love others, my neighbor, as I love myself. And if I do to my neighbor mm. what I wouldn't do to myself, then I don't love my neighbor. Mm. If I would treat my neighbor the way I wouldn't want myself to be treated, then I really don't love my neighbor. And if I really don't love my neighbor, <laughs> then I really don't love God. Because John said, how can you say you love God who you've never seen? Jesus. 
but you can't love your neighbor who you see every day. If I can't love my neighbor, then I can't love my God. And if I can't love my God, then I cannot please God. And if I cannot please God, I can never be at my best. Micah 6 8. See, we start preaching and I call this the Micah man week. Mm. Coined it from somebody else. But nonetheless, it's the word. No, the Lord has told us what is good. In other words, the Lord has told us what it is for us to please Him. Mm-hmm. What He requires of us to do what is just. To show constant love and mercy. To live in fellowship with our God. Mm. In other words, loving others. Mm -hmm. Treating them just and with honor and mercy. Mm -hmm. Loving God. Isn't that what Jesus said? Jesus, which is the greatest? We're going to get him now. Which commandment is the greatest? 2020, we would say, I'm going to get Jesus now. Get him to come to church. <laughs> Amen. Tell him you're having fish dinner. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And some kosher food. Come on, Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Get him in the fellowship hall. Because, you know, people talk when they're at the dinner table. Matter of fact, you always in Bible study, when we just talked about Jesus in the table. But get him down at the table, and then we're going to say, okay, Jesus, Mm -hmm. what sin is the greatest? I died for all of them. James 1.27. That's the last one I'm going to give you. Because you know this. Mm. Religion that God our Father accepts Mm. as pure and faultless. In other words, pleasing God. How am I going to please God? How do I get to my best? Mm -hmm. By pleasing God. How do I please God? Religion that is undefiled, that is pure, that is faultless before God, look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself spotless or unpolluted from the world. Mm. Loving others and keeping yourself clean. Keeping yourself right, spotless, really has to do with loving one another. Because when our lives are a mess, Mm. now we have become offensive to the world. And even to the little ones. Because he says, if you offend the least of my little ones. Yes. So now when our lives as believers are jacked up, mm. we are saying that I really don't love God and I don't love others. Because what God has told me to do is to keep ourselves right. Yes, Jesus. You want the best? People, you know, God, I just want the best. I just challenge you today, if if you really want the best that God has for you, look at your life. What kind of life are you living? What kind of life are you living? Are you living a life that pleases God? Are you living a life that proves that you love him with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and you love your neighbor? Are you in such judgment of other people? Are you always going around picking to see what somebody else is doing? Or are you making sure that you are unspotted before the world? You know, there's another scripture in Galatians that I love, and I learned so early in my Christian life. But I think it's Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, where it says, Brothers, sisters, if, if your brother be overtaken in a fault, 
If your brother is overtaken, if your brother is overcome with their issue, if your brother is struggling, if your sister, she, she is just really seems like to be mangled up, it says you that are spiritual, yes. restore that person yes, Lord. with love and with a spirit of meekness, mm -hmm. considering yourself. Lest you also fall into the same trap. I'm in the word. Your best is yet to come. When will it come? When your life pleases God. When does my life please God? When I love him with all my mind, heart, and soul. And when I love my neighbor as myself. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for this word, this meditation today. I thank you for the last three weeks that we've been trying to work this out so that we can be not just better, but that we can be our best. God, there's so many things we want in our lives, and there's so many things many of us want naturally. We want Businesses, and we want what we call prosperity. We want to see success. We want our children greater than we are, God. We, 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 we want them to have and possess so many things. Uh, we want health, and we want strength, and we want wealth. We want all those things, and God, yes, we can achieve those things and feel that we've achieved our best. But God, at the end of the day, realize that our best is only realized when we have pleased you. And if we have obtained all of those things and failed to love you, we're not at our best. If we've obtained all those other things and look at our children we have and we look at our, 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 our wealth and our bank account and all of those things and we don't love our neighbor as we've loved ourselves, we haven't reached our best. But God, our best comes when we become our best selves. And our best self is the one that loves God with all our heart, mind, and soul and loves our neighbor as ourselves. So bless us, God, to remember and realize and never forget that we need one another. I need you and you need me. We cannot make it. We are, we, you have not put us here to be an island unto ourselves, but we are to love and encourage and pick up one another. And no matter what they're going through, no matter what their issue, God, just like the woman, God, we need to stop and touch them, God let them realize that what we have we want them to have too. Spirit of the living God, give us ears to hear. Grant us eyes to see and hearts to receive. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Amen. Can't you give God praise? Perhaps wherever you may be right now, just, just praise Him. And my challenge to you today, no matter where you are, and it's got to become personal, am I at my best? Am I at my best? What's the check? What's the check? What's the check? Not that I come to church. Not that I tithe. Not that I memorize the Bible five times, front and back. Hallelujah. Not that I passed out the tracks. Not that I've been to the hospital all the time. All those things are so wonderful. But at my best, that I'm loving God with all my heart. 
and I'm loving my neighbor as myself. So much so that no matter what their issue is in their life, I'm asking God for the mercy and the grace to love them as he would. Since at the end of the day, he's the only one that can give that final judgment. He hasn't called me to judge them, but he's called me to love them. Is that you? Is that you? Is that your challenge today? I think it's a part of all of our challenges today. The Pharisee thought he had Jesus. I'm going to get him now. Which commandment is the greatest? And he said, everything falls under this. Which sin is the greatest? Every sin falls under the blood of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Before I close, there might be someone who's watching or listening that has never given their life to Christ. I want you to know today, I don't care what your issue is, what your situation is, what your sin is, I promise you today, if you will give it to God, if you will confess it to him, Jesus said, I died for all sins, not some, all sins. And I don't care where you are, what you're doing, how far, how heinous you may think it is, you can come to him right now. You can say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. He says in Isaiah that he blesses the contrite and the broken spirit. Don't come haughty and proud, but come broken. God, I'm sorry for what I've done. Forgive me for what I've done. I've come with a broken spirit. My heart is contrite. I know it's been a mess. I, I, I know I've been a mess. God, I've sinned against you over and over and over, but now, God, I'm coming to you. And I'm asking that you would forgive me. I promise you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. Don't, don't, don't wait. Don't wait until later. Don't wait until after you eat. Hallelujah. Don't wait until family comes over. Right now, let's do it. Lord, come into my life. Lord, save me. Lord, cleanse me. Make me yours. You pray that prayer? You ask the Lord to come into your life. You have. You've just begun the best days of your life for your best is yet to come. God bless you. God bless you.